Hey guys, this is Monica with Romo Plans and today I am doing part two of setting up my October budget in my Erin Condren monthly planner. All right guys, so I am using my Erin Condren monthly planner. I use this for all of my budgeting and finances and I love this planner for budgeting. It is my favorite planner. Um, I would have to say, <laughs> um, I use this multiple times a week, um, tracking expenses, just checking things out. So if you haven't checked the video that I put out yesterday where I set up the monthly spread and the budget, go ahead and check that out. And today we'll be setting up the debt tracker, sinking fund trackers, and then also the dashboard page. So for October, we have this page before the month, and this is where I put my sinking funds. So I use this page for my sinking funds because it is lined, and I like that it's lined so I don't have to draw the lines there. And I will be using a kit that I made, um, so it's this really pretty pumpkin leaves and a little bit of sunflower on there. Um, I just get the designs off Etsy and I go and I design the kit and make those. So okay. And I really like designing the kits. Um, it just is a lot of fun for me um, just to kind of find the designs and it also is help save money as well so so the sinking fund categories that we have are Amazon and this includes the prime membership we have autos. This includes oral changes um, and then the taxes for auto. And then we have car savings. Um, we are not actively looking for a car or saving for a car, but we do put a little bit in there each month just so we have that whenever we get to that point. And then Christmas, um, we put stuff in there for everything from gifts to gift wrap to food to take to Christmas gatherings, giving for Christmas, anything like that. Um, I did a video on setting up my Christmas budget because I went ahead and started Christmas shopping. So I needed to go ahead and get that budget down on paper and so I can track that. So if you haven't seen that, definitely check that out. And then also we have daycare because the way we pay daycare is we pay it ahead. So right now we are paid up for a while and then once we need to make a payment, then we'll basically empty out the sinking fund and then save until the next time. Um, then we have just dental, just to save up for, to do some, get some dental work. And then our gift fund, that includes birthdays and things like that. And then house, medical. Our medical is not our main medical savings. Our main is our HSA, but I do like to have just a little bit in a medical sinking fund just in case I don't have an HSA card or on me, then we have that where we can take it out of here. And then my daughter has a sinking fund where we do clothes um, and then if we need to do diapers or anything like that and this we can do that and then we have a sinking fund for her birthday that includes the party and things like that um, I do have a planner sinking fund and this sinking fund doesn't go out of the family budget this goes out of my allowance budget I will put money in here um, I recently sold destashed some stuff so I have some put some extra money in there um, and then the school is for my husband he is going back to school in January so we want to make sure that we have 
the money saved for that so we don't have to take out loans. And then the shutdown is his company um, has a couple of times a year where they shut down. So he can use vacation for part of it and then they, they can do um, part of it is unpaid, but it doesn't count against them. So we want to make sure that we have that money saved up. So when it's the unpaid part, we just transfer the money over and then it's not, we're not missing. It's, we don't go month where he's not getting paid half of what he should. And then we have the vacation fund and then the wedding fund. And the wedding is for my sister's wedding in December. Okay, so then we'll put the totals down here. And go ahead and draw the lines. And I typically close out my sinking funds a little bit before the end of the month so I can have everything ready to go for the next month and kind of get that um, picture of what it looks like. So um, we are starting October with in our Amazon sinking fund we have $75. Um, for autos we have $52. 82 for car savings we have 190 Christmas we have 1158 85 I did do some Christmas shopping in September so that's why that one's not an even number daycare we have 1906 the dental is 768 gifts we have 4007 we're not really getting together um, a lot for like family birthdays and stuff. So we don't really need a lot in there right now. Um, and then, sorry, for the gifts, it's 4077. And then the house is 4007. Medical, we have 14145. Michaela, we have $56.98. We did, in September, get her some clothes um, because she is kind of moving into 3T. And so we wanted to go ahead and get her some clothes. Plus, it got really cold all of a sudden. <laughs> and we didn't really have a lot of pants in 2T, 2T and 3T for her. So we wanted to go ahead and get some of that. And then Michaela's birthday, we have 60248 that is fully funded until next year during her birthday. Her birthday is the end of March. So this year we didn't really, we didn't have a birthday party for her. We did like a small family get together, but as far as a big party, we didn't. So we took all the money. We just left all the money that we had saved for it and put it in there. And um, for next year and she's two. So it, she didn't really, you know, she doesn't know that she missed her birthday party. Like she didn't have a big birthday party. Um, and at this point we just do a big a birthday party with like the families and things like that. So we just kind of smaller dinners. For planner supplies, I have 37.72. School, we have 21.40.30. Shut down 174, vacation 564, 37, and then the wedding I have 299.53, and that is because I have so this I did a big Amazon order um, for some stuff for the bachelorette weekend and. I need to return 90% of it. And so that will actually go up quite a bit when I do that return. So then that total is 
So that is what we have in our sinking funds for Oct for the starting in October. So this next page, what I do is I do our debt tracker on this page. And I'm using the same um, pumpkin design. And for the debt tracker, we track the, the debt, the name of the debt, and then we track the beginning balance. We track how much we paid, and then the ending balance, and then we track the difference. So, um, because I like to see how far it went down and what the beginning and the balance is, and then how much we paid and how that compares to how much far it went down. So for this, um, I do draw lines for this. Um, and this page is kind of weird because it does, this is where the divider is. So I have that lamination there that I can't really write on. So then I'm going to go ahead and put the total down here. And so for the deaths that we track on this page, it is our discover. Um, the Ford, which is my car. And then we have Lenkey, which is my student loans. And we have Nelnet. We don't track our mortgage on this page because we just don't, um, it's not something that we really are tracking right now. Um, and pay we want to pay it off, off of course we want to pay it off but um it's not part of like our debt payoff at this time so that is why it is not on this page And I don't have the balances yet because like the Ford, it comes out at the end, like one of, on the, one of the last days of the month. So I don't have that. So I won't be able to do that until probably I do my September budget results. And then because we have this like kaleidoscope, um, right here, I just like to put a little bit of decoration um on here to just kind of help cover that up and make it a more cohesive look there we go and then um the next thing we're going to do is the train the dashboard page so this dashboard page I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it in the very beginning. Um, because it just had a lot of different parts to it, but I've kind of gotten to where I like it. I do hate that kaleidoscope thing right there though. <laughs> it is so big. Um, so, 
So what I do is I cover up that kaleidoscope thing and then I cover up the monthly goals and I still use this for monthly goals. So um, I just do a thing there. Because I want this page to still be, have that same design as the rest of it. Um, so I just did individual, I just do individual check boxes to cover up these hexagons. And then this is where I will write out my monthly goals. And this long box, I actually have been using last month. I started using it for my credit score and I really liked that. So I'm just gonna put Chase and then I'll put what it was at the beginning of the month and then what it was at the end of the month. And then I also have Discover because when you do have a card with these companies, they you can go in and check your credit score. And they do differ um, because of, you know, the agency that they're using to check it. Also, the time of the month that it's pulled and different things like that. So I kind of like to see just to see that um, the credit score is something we still want to make sure that we are doing well with because at some point we will be selling our house and getting a new one years down the road but <laughs> it is one of our long term goals and so we just want to make sure that we still have a good credit score with that okay so then I just use a little bit, a little strip to cover that up. And then right here, I will put my savings challenge. And each month I try to pick something. Sometimes it's for the family budget. Sometimes it's for my personal budget. So it just really depends. So this month, um, we are doing where each week use food we already have and for at least one meal. And we try to do this um, anyway. The way I meal plan is I kind of look at what we have and if I can build up on the top of that. But um, the saving challenge for this month is for each week to use food we already have on hand for at least one meal. So we don't have to buy anything for at least one of our meals, which will help us save a lot of money. Help us save some money. Okay, so the next thing that I'm gonna put down is this big space. This is the space that I wasn't really sure what to do with um, in the beginning of the year, but I actually, because we don't have a lot of pages um, in this planner, and I use two pages for my budget because I separate them out into categories. I use this for my weekly check-in. So, um, I have it where it's eating out, gas, groceries, and miscellaneous, and then I go from the 1st to the 7th, and 8th to the 14th, 15th to the 21st, and then 22nd to the end of the month. And this is where I track my weekly check-in. So, um, it really works really well for this because um, it I like it because it's not taking up the whole page. It's not, um, and it's a really good use of this space. The last thing that we're gonna do is, 
set up the sinking fund transaction log. And for this, I do want out this, these hexagons. I am excited because next year we won't have those. And I have ordered my 2021 monthly planner for my budget and actually shipped today. So I'm super excited about that. I'm getting in and planning um, how I'm going to use everything. So then for the um, transaction log, what I do is I of course do the date and then I do a description, have a description column and then put the category, the amount, and then tracked. And tracked means at the end of the month, have I gone through when I'm closing out my sinking funds, I'm just tr checking it off that I've calculated that. And that helps to just be, um, helps me to make sure that I'm calculating everything the way it should be. I do two pages for the transaction log because the way that I add to my sinking funds, I add them at each paycheck. So um, I don't, so if I'm adding to all of my sinking funds during the month um, and then the, and the daycare at least, I add both because that is automatically drafted. Um, and part of my husband's paycheck goes into the sinking fund account for the daycare because that one is kind of the one where we need to make sure that we have money for that because that is a big expense for us and that is something that, you know, it happens every week. Um, so it's not like, you know, Christmas is a big expense for us too, but we have some leeway if something were to happen. Um, so that is why I put it on two pages. And especially with being a three paycheck month, I will definitely need the, um, the pages as well. And we are doing, I do have the bachelorette weekend this weekend. And usually what I do is for vacation or Christmas or anything like that. I use the back of the pages to kind of, um, to track my expenses and then I will add the total here on this page. That way it does help save some space there as well. All right. So this, this is my transaction log for my sinking funds. I really like, it works very well for me just to have everything laid out. And then, so we have the transaction log and then we have the dashboard page with the monthly goal, the credit score, the check-ins, the savings challenge. Um, we have the debt tracker and then we have the sinking fund, sinking fund totals. So I will have everything linked below that I can, um, the sticker, the stickers I did make, so I can't link those, but I'll have the planner and stuff linked below for you. If you want to check it out. Um, I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any more of my videos. Thanks. I hope you'll have a great day.